it's Katrina. From mysterious sounds in the ocean to spontaneous human combustion, here are 10 scientific mysteries that were finally solved. Number 10. The Spin of the Earth's Core the Earth's core is made up of a solid inner section and a liquid outer section. It's been known for a long time that the core rotates, but what was confusing was the fact that the inner part of the Earth's core actually rotates in a different direction than the outer core. How is that possible? Recent research has discovered why this is, and surprisingly, both parts of the core are being influenced by the same thing, the Earth's magnetic field. It drifts in a slightly westerly direction, and it exerts a force on the liquid outer core, which is made from iron and nickel and causes it to spin in a westerly direction as well. The inner core, on the other hand, which is solid and about the size of the moon, rotates in an easterly direction and faster than the rotation of the Earth itself. By studying the fluctuations within the magnetic field and the spin of the solid core, it's now been proven that the core is actually being pushed by the magnetic field in an equal but opposite direction, to the way it pulls the outer core, kind of like how the two ends of a magnet either attract or repel against other magnetic objects. Number 9. The Bloop in 1997, hydrophones across the Pacific detected an unusual sound known as the bloop. Do you remember? If not, here it is for you to hear. It was detected by monitoring stations placed by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration more than 3,000 miles apart and was a loud, ultra-deep frequency unlike anything that had been previously recorded. There were a number of suggestions as to what this could have been. Was it an as-of-yet undiscovered giant creature that was living in the depths? Evidence of a secret weapons test? The answer remained a mystery for a decade. The answer wasn't quite as unexpected as these suggestions, but in many ways was equally as impressive. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has confirmed that the frequency and time duration characteristics of the bloop were consistent with, and essentially identical to, the frequencies created during ice quakes in the Antarctic. A study conducted between 2005 and 2010 found that these sounds were frequent, and the process of ice cracking and breaking up was the dominant natural sound in the Southern Ocean. Tens of thousands of these ice quakes occur each year, and while most aren't anywhere near as loud or far-reaching as the bloop was, it's more than likely that it was acoustic evidence of a large event happening on an ice sheet. Number 8. Deja Vu have you ever seen or experienced something that triggered a sense of familiarity, even though you know you haven't seen it before? This sensation, known as deja vu, has long been a cause of confusion, but neurologists now think they have found the cause. Between 60 and 80 percent of people are thought to experience it in their lifetimes, but it's virtually impossible to recreate, which is why it's taken so long to understand. While it might seem like a glitch in the matrix, the cause lies in the way that the brain stores and interprets information. The retention of long-term memories takes place in the temporal lobes, which are also responsible for the detection of familiarity and recognition. If there's a glitch in the processing of new information, it's possible that a shortcut happens that results in the sensation of familiarity, even if it's not true. Studies that look at people with particular forms of epilepsy affecting the temporal lobes have found that sufferers experience deja vu more often than others, which points towards discrepancies with how it's interpreting information as the cause. And now for number 7. But first, be sure to subscribe if you are new here, and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Number 7. The Temperature of the Sun As the central structure and hottest thing in our solar system, the Sun is a focal point for research, but temperature readings found something unexpected. The Sun's atmosphere is actually hotter than its surface, a pretty strange anomaly. The surface itself is around 10,340 degrees Fahrenheit, but the atmosphere is up to 300 times as hot. But how is it reaching such extreme temperatures? In 2015, researchers revealed the answer. Rather than a continual gradual heating process, it happens because of intermittent but regular explosive bursts of heat that are released from the surface. These tiny explosions are called nanoflares, and each one releases a similar amount of energy as a 10 megaton hydrogen bomb, reaching temperatures of around 18 million degrees Fahrenheit. Millions of them are released every second around the sun, and in combination, they are enough to cause such a vast difference between the atmospheric and surface temperatures. Number 6. 
the Sailing Stones. In California's Death Valley, a phenomenon occurs that has baffled scientists ever since it was first discovered. Large rocks were found moving along, leaving a trail behind them. Called the Sailing Stones, some weighed as much as 700 pounds and traveled across Racetrack Playa, a dry lake bed. Did they grow legs and walk? Were there insects underneath moving them? With theories ranging from aliens to pranksters or magnetic fields, no one has actually ever seen the rocks move, which only adds to the mystery. For decades, scientists have tried to understand why these rocks move as much as 820 feet across the ground and explored more down-to-earth ideas such as dust devils or powerful winds. The solution was finally published in 2013, where a team realized that under certain winter conditions, water and ice form across Racetrack Playa. This meant that the rocks could be easily moved by gentle winds across the ice. Because the dry ground is muddy during these conditions, the rocks leave these trails or grooves in their wake. Another mystery solved. Number 5. Spontaneous Human Combustion Spontaneous human combustion is when a person bursts into flames from within, with no apparent ignition coming from an external source. There have been hundreds of reported cases of it happening, with the first written account coming from 1663, which reports a woman in Paris who went up in ashes and smoke while she was sleeping. All accounts follow a similar pattern where the victims are almost completely consumed, usually inside their home. Sometimes there's a sweet, smoky smell where it happened, and interestingly, images often show the corpse's torso and head being charred beyond recognition, but the extremities remain intact. Furthermore, the room around the victim typically shows minimal fire damage, but a greasy residue is sometimes left behind on the furniture and walls. With it seemingly happening every so often, the causes of spontaneous combustion have been a mystery for hundreds of years, but researchers think they've finally explained it by what is called the wick effect. When lit by a source, the human body can act as an inside-out candle. Rather than a wick being surrounded by wax, the body fat acts as the flammable substance, and the clothes act as the wick. The fat melts from from the heat and soaks into the clothing that keeps it burning slowly. This would explain the charred central remains of the body, the fairly intact extremities, the lack of damage to the room, and the sticky substance that's sometimes found. But actually why this phenomenon happens, or who is susceptible to it, is unknown. Number 4. Fairy Circles in the Namib Desert The vast Namib Desert is covered in sprawling grasslands, but there's a strange feature that's long been a mystery, the so-called fairy circles. They are barren circles within the vegetation that can be anywhere between 10 and 65 feet in diameter. Local legend says that they were caused by the footprints of the gauze as they walked through the area, but recent research has found a more down-to-earth explanation, although admittedly not as fun. The circles are actually regularly spaced, and when seen from above, it becomes clear how pervasive they are. At first, it was thought this was an effect from the plants competing for resources, or some sort of bacteria. Turns out, beneath each circle, there is a termite colony. The insects create a large network of underground tunnels to forage for food and destroy the vegetation above. If one colony encroaches on another, they fight until one side has been completely destroyed. This results in a series of colonies that are a similar size to each other and borders between them that are a no-termites land. This causes barren circles directly above the termite activity and vegetation growth over the colony boundaries. Number 3. The Blood Rain of Kerala during the late summer of 2001, between July 25th and September 21st, there were a number of instances of blood-colored rain falling across the southern Indian state of Kerala. Along with the majority of reports saying that the rain was a deep crimson red, there were also times when it was green, black, and even yellow, and also caused the trees to shed their leaves and appear burnt. With such mysterious phenomenon, scientists got to work to understand exactly what was happening. It was found that in each drop of rain there were more than 9 million red particles, along with some different colors. It was a neutral pH, but also contained large quantities of nickel, manganese, titanium, chromium, and copper. The red particles were further analyzed and found to be comprised of carbon and oxygen, with small traces of iron and silicon. It was first theorized that this was the result of a meteor exploding high up in the atmosphere, but scientists then discovered the presence of spores. Twelve years after the event, it was finally revealed that the rain had contained an algae called Trentipolia annulata, which is not native to India, and they believed to have been introduced into the clouds when they were forming above Australia might be explained, but it is still extremely weird. Number 2. Hobbits 
During investigations on the Indonesian island of Flores in 2003, fossils of small humanoids were found that had died off about 15,000 years ago. Often referred to as hobbits because of their small stature, it has long been debated whether these were of a new branch of human ancestor or whether they were specimens of modern-day humans who had suffered from deformities due to disease. Analysis of the skulls that was revealed in 2016 finally found the answer, that they were not Homo sapiens, but from an entirely new species that has been called Homo floresiensis. At just over 3 feet tall and weighing 55 pounds, it's quite possible that the hobbits had descended from Homo erectus, but had undergone a process called insular dwarfing. This is where animals are able to migrate around the world due to low sea levels, but when they become trapped on islands when the waters rise again, they are left with low supplies of food. To be able to survive in such an environment, they adapt to being smaller and needing fewer nutrients. This theory is further supported by the fact the hobbits weren't the only miniature creatures to live on the island, as it was also home to stegodons, a now extinct miniature species of elephant. Number 1. Pulsating Coral more than 200 years ago, the naturalist Jean-Baptiste Lamarck described seeing some species of coral pulsating, where they opened and closed their feathery tentacles in a grabbing motion. But it was only in 2013 that this process was finally understood. The scientific community couldn't explain why these soft corals, which are common in the reefs of the Red Sea, would exert energy to move in this way, but it's now been found to be a vital process to their survival. The corals, known as Xenidae, are host to photosynthetic algae that provide the corals with essential nutrients and live off their waste products. This symbiotic reliance between the coral and the algae is the basis behind why the pulsation is needed. The algae produce oxygen, but when there's a high enough concentration of it in the water, it can prevent them from effectively photosynthesizing. In recent research studies, the corals were found to be pulsating at least 95% of the time, only stopping in the late afternoon when the sunlight was less than half as intense as it is at its strongest. The movement of the tentacles acts like a fan to move oxygen-rich water away from the algae so they can be more efficient, and makes such a difference that photosynthesis is 10 times higher during pulsating than it is at other times, which ultimately means the corals are provided with more nutrition from the algae than they would otherwise. Thanks for watching! Now if anyone asks you about these things, you'll have the explanation! Be sure to subscribe if you are new here, and I'll see you tomorrow! Bye!